Hello all, and welcome back to the Spruce Gate Modeling. Today, we will be looking at winter basing schemes for the German Grenadier that we painted earlier. These are standard 25 mil Warlord um, bases. They come on sprues. You just clip them out, and I like to clean off some flash. And we will start off by adding a little bit of spackle to the base, or filler, depending on where you are. So, we take our filler, put it on our uh, sculpting tool. Uh, this is a relatively cheap set. And we smear it onto the base until the entire base is covered as such. We now take the flatter end, dip it in water, and smooth over the base as such. All right. So we're just about done with this. Um, just make sure to get those contours really nice and smooth. I would not make it flat, um, as that isn't overly realistic. But here we are. Um, the next step will be gritting the base. Make sure we do this while this um, that spackle or filler is still wet. Take your base and grit, that's just dirt from outside, and sprinkle it onto the base. Uh, go pretty heavy here um or pretty light it really doesn't matter um as the snow might cover up some of this but now we'll be adding some debris um this is just a coffee stirrer um we'll be using this for a uh, wooden plank uh <laughs> pretty basic as it's processed wood and you're using it to represent processed wood but here we have sprue clippers and wire cutters i like to use the wire cutters for something a little bit heavier so, you take your coffee stirrer, take your clippers, and you clip it. <laughs> it's as simple as that. So, of course, you probably aren't going to want a clean cut, um, as you are looking for a debris look. So you take the ends, and you snap them off for a more jagged look. Makes it look like it broke off of something at some point. And make sure you do that for both ends. Uh, again, just a much easier way to make it look a, quite a bit more realistic. Um, on this base, we will be using multiple types of um, debris. So you can use as many or as few of these as you want, depending on the theme you're looking for. So next, we'll be taking our base's sprue. We'll be taking our sprue clippers. And we'll be cutting a segment out of the sprue. This will be used to create some bricks for the ground. So yeah, as you can see here, we're taking out one of the segments in between the sprue gates. Um, that's all you'll, you'll really need. Um, and that'll get you about one, maybe two bricks, depending on the size of the bricks you're looking for. I personally like to cut out a whole row at once. Um, you know, just makes your job a little easier a little bit down the road. So there's the whole row cut out. Now we cut out one of the segments, uh, you know, do the end segments and then work your way in. Don't get the sprue gate um, and make sure to use the flat side of the clippers cutting it so that you don't end up with any messy, weird little bits. So, all right, make sure it's about the size of the brick that you want. Um, it's hard to get two bricks out of these unless you have a cutter with two flat head, flat sides, which I have not seen. Um, because it always messes the sprue up a little bit. But now we take it and we cut it in half horizontally. Um, so that you have only about half the width of the sprue. Um, I'm probably just going to go ahead do that again. We've got another brick there. And... You can make them assorted sizes, and here I'm going to cut the wooden plank in half. Forgot to do this earlier. Um, just, uh, you know, make it a little bit more realistically scaled. So with that, you have some of your man-made debris done, but I'm going to be taking a stick. This is, again, just a stick from outside. Just going to be breaking it a bit. Breaking it right down to scale. And this will also be going on the base. Um, make sure that you pick a stick, you don't, this isn't necessary, but I like to pick a stick that still has a little bit of the bark on it, um, as it can 
introduce some really cool painting opportunities, which we will see later. So now we're taking our super glue, and we're just going to attach the bricks to the base, the stick, and the board. So now our base is fully primed and we can begin painting. We will start off with burnt umber. I use artist acrylic so that I'm not using something too expensive and an old brush. So we are just going to give all the soil a big old base coat. Um, you can hit some other stuff. Um, you know, probably just a decent idea to base coat the whole base with this stuff actually. So there we are done with that. And next, we will be taking G Olive Brown, the Leo, um, to do a bit of a highlight. Um, this is a relatively heavy highlight, but the burnt number will still appear in the recesses. Uh, Tan Earth. Um, this can... I like to do this so that it, I paint it over the whole base and smudge it. It actually gives a really cool effect. You can also highlight it on. But there is a complete dirt base. Now we will be taking burnt sienna and we will be painting the bricks. This is our base brick color. We will be giving them some highlights later. So make sure that that's on pretty nicely. Make sure to get the sides. Those are what will really be showing. We now take leather brown from the army painter range and we base coat all exposed wood with it. Like I said, the bark offers some really cool painting opportunities. So I wait to do the bark. Um, I only do exposed wood, so the plank and the ends of the stick. We will now be taking English uniform and base coating the bark. You can also add a bit of this to any exposed wood if you want to, you know, spice it up a little. Give a little bit more depth. I really like to use a lot of wood tones um, on each piece of wood so that it's really not single colored. If you look at anything, it really isn't. Now we'll be taking barbarian flesh, a little bit of a weird color to use for a base. But we're going to be putting really light highlights on and the bricks and smudging them and then we're going to be taking your pure red and we're going to be putting a very fine highlight on the bricks with that as well so that will complete our brick highlights and it is time to move on to wood highlights we'll start with german camo pale brown i use this to highlight all of the exposed wood again you can also use this to highlight again some of the bark areas just to add some depth but we also have U.S. Field Drive for that. That should be the main bark highlight. Um, and you can also use it for, I mean, some of the exposed wood too. So, fully painted. Now we are on to our tufts. These are huge miniatures frosted tufts. Um, these are really nice. They're not self-adhesive, but that's not that big a deal. I super glue them on anyway. And what we do is we're going to be taking our tweezers. You've got your big tufts and your little tufts. And you're going to decide what amount of each tuft you want. I'm going to be going a big tuft and a little tuft. And you take your tweezers. You pick them off as so. Um, sorry, just a little, little bit there. Um, you pick it off. Um, I like to pick all of the tufts for the base off before I glue them down. Just so I can kind of plan it out. And then I'm just going to close up that. And now we take our super glue again. We glue it on. I'll put this one, let's say, yeah, right over there uh, in between the stick and the log um, and that in between the bricks. So now we are on to the fun part, the snow. So this may seem like a bit of a waste, but I really like to put all the highlights on the base. Um, but, you know, you just layer it on there. I mean, um, <laughs> there's not much to this besides painting it on the even strokes and using common sense where snow should be, where snow shouldn't be. Um, and there you go. You've got a fully snowed up base. However, I like to take some of this. Uh, this, by the way, this is Stonehaven Snow, really great product. And I like to take some dry stuff and sprinkle it over. So now, finally, you're going to take our miniature. Remember him? Um, yep, uh, this will be our final step for this miniature. And, or, you know, if you want to use sealant, you can do that after this. I just won't be showing that. And you're going to take your same super glue. You're going to apply it to your miniature's feet in relatively small amounts. And then, I mean, there's not much to this. You just put them down wherever you want them to be. I like to do this while the snow is still a little wet. can make it a little iffy, but it also makes it so that the snow is impressionable. 
and it makes it a lot more realistic. So here we are, a completed winter German Grenadier. Thank you everyone for watching what will hopefully be the first of many two-part series on painting wargaming miniatures. Thanks again and goodbye.